He's been held by U.S. authorities for nearly two decades, suspected of having connections to 9-11. He is Abu Zubeda, and he was never charged. Now, the Supreme Court is weighing whether Zubeda is allowed to receive information from the federal government on his detainment. Zubeda was captured in Pakistan in 2002 and is currently in Guantanamo Bay. However, a new ProPublica report details his time before that in Thailand and Poland, where he was allegedly subjected to secret torture tactics. Investigative reporter Raymond Bonner wrote that report for ProPublica and joins me now. He's also producing a documentary about Zubeda. Raymond, welcome. Great to have you with us. So tell us a little bit more about Zubeda and why U.S. authorities have kept him in custody for so long without charging him with anything. He was captured, Tanya. He was captured in, he was the first actually post 9-11 suspect captured. He was captured in Pakistan, seized in Pakistan in a joint CIA, FBI, Pakistan intelligence raid the cia and the fbi had been monitoring him chasing him for at least two years um i've talked to the cia station chief and the F head of the fbi the operation that that captured him um and he was the first and he was taken to thailand the first uh, suspect taken to one of the cia's secret prisons so-called black sites uh where he was tortured and it's interesting you know, we say allegedly tortured or uh, uh, enhanced inter interrogation techniques, the euphemism. But yesterday in the Supreme Court hearing, very interesting, several of the justices, including Justice Barrett, actually used the word torture. They did not resort to the mm -hmm. euphemisms of enhanced interrogation techniques. So has it been confirmed then that he was subject to torture at these secret spots in Thailand and Poland? Or is that what the sort of crux of this case is about? The, well, the crux of the case that was in the Supreme Court yesterday was a little bit complicated. It was had to do with an investigation in Poland uh, into because that's one of the places where Zubeda was held. It was taken there after Thailand, when journalists began to ask questions about was there a secret base in Thailand, the CIA closed it down. This was in, at the end of 2002 and quickly and secretly moved Zubeda to Poland. The Polish government is now investigating prosecutors as to whether any Polish officials were complicit in the torture um, of Zubeda there, in the interrogation and torture. And they've asked for help for, from Zubeda's lawyers and the Trump administration, and, and the, sorry, the Zubeda's lawyers sought to take the deposition of James Mitchell and Bruce Jessen, who were the CIA contractors that designed the interrogation program. And the Trump administration stepped in and tried to block the taking of that deposition, arguing it's a state secret that he was held in Poland. Well, everybody knows he was held in Poland. The president of Poland has said he was held there. You know, there have been this Senate committee report. There have been report after report after report by human rights groups, by journalists, and the president of Poland. So it's really not a secret, but they're claiming it's a state secret in order to stop uh, Mitchell and Justin from testifying, testifying about what they did to um, Zubeda in Thailand and in uh, Poland. Now, you mentioned the Trump administration has tried to keep some of this information under wraps. What about the Biden administration? Uh, it hasn't been very forthcoming either. What is its stance on um, whether this information, you know, whether this is state secrets or not? It's, uh, Tanya, it's picked up the baton from the, from the uh, Trump administration. There seems to be no change in the policy whatsoever. Abu Zubeda has now been in Guantanamo through four presidencies. He went there under Bush, he was held under Clinton, he was held under Obama, I mean, I'm sorry, Bush, Obama, Trump, and now Biden. Four administrations without any charges being filed against him. He's had a habeas petition, which is what prisoners anywhere file, uh, not just terrorist suspects, but any prisoner can file in order to challenge his detention. 
14 years without a ruling. I mean, unprecedented is always a dangerous word to say because somebody will come along and find a case that's pending longer. But it's just extraordinary that the federal court has been sitting on his case without ruling for 14 years. And yesterday during the hearing, I mean, you could see the, the some of the justices were stunned. I said, 14 years, Justice Breyer said? And Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts said, why doesn't he file a habeas petition? Well, he has, but the court hasn't ruled on it, won't rule on it. So a quick question about who he is, though. Originally, it's my understanding, from reading on this, that he was uh, suspected of being a high-level al-Qaeda operative, which is why they detained him initially. Then they decided he wasn't high-level, but still a part of al-Qaeda, correct? Is part of this sort of just sort of an embarrassment on the part of, you know, the CIA or that we've held him for so long we can't admit that it's been a mistake? Well, it's, yes. And he's not, he's not part of al-Qaeda. In fact, the government has admitted he was never a member of al-Qaeda. When he was captured, they said, oh, he was number three. And a lot of journalists reported it at the time that he was number three in al-Qaeda. He was not number three in al-Qaeda. He was not even a member of al-Qaeda. He had some disagreements uh, with Osama bin Laden uh, over the, the policies of al-Qaeda and what they were doing. He was in and out of Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, he was a logistician, more or less. And I had one FBI person tell me this is why his name kept showing up, because every potential terrorist who went through Pakistan or Afghanistan, Zubaydah did a lot of the paperwork for him to get in and out and, and, and ran a guest house. But he was never a member of al-Qaeda or, or a high-ranking member uh, of al-Qaeda. Thank you for clarifying all of that. Raymond Bonner, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight. Thank you.